Can you imagine having your debut album produced by Bob Rock and it goes gold the very first day of its release? And then you get put on the Monsters of Rock tour that features Van Halen, Metallica, when they were just down below, and then the Scorpions as one of the headliners. And then you become the drummer of that band, Scorpions, for like 20 something years. That's like an eternity in rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking with James Kotak about all these things here on episode 78, Tulsa Music Stream. How are you guys doing? Yep, It is a great night. Thank you guys for joining us on a Wednesday night. We are so excited to be talking to James. He has quite an illustrious career, just like Scott just laid out. And we want to give a shout out to Andrea. And I don't know if your name is pronounced Janae or Janet, but we appreciate you putting us in touch with James. For sure. He's been a delight to deal with on the email. And we look forward to talking to him once he gets in our stream room here. How you doing, Nine? I'm doing great. You having a good evening? Having a great evening. It's yeah. nice and rainy. I'm Scott Squires. This is Nine, and that is Jana, our yes. host for, yep. the, for the day. We, for the night. Oh, yeah. if every time. We're, we're, <laughs> we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, we are slowly but surely building the fan base, and that is a wonderful thing. Uh, we want to remind you guys that not only can you uh, see these streams live as they go down live, you can always catch the replay on our YouTube channel. We need you guys to subscribe to the YouTube Tulsa Music Stream channel. So easy to. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And we're going to talk about our podcast uh, format here in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and let James in the room. He has arrived. So we will be getting him on screen and talking about all things James Kotak yes. and his, his career, which is very expansive. He's played with more bands besides the two we've already mentioned. Oh, yeah. James, can you hear us okay? Uh, yeah, I'm Fe trying to, uh, the light, the bulb burnt out in the lamp, like just now. Uh, <laughs> so I got this overhead thing, it's terrible. You know what, that's okay. We, we, can, we can see you pretty good and we can hear you and that's the important thing. But um, yeah. man, yeah, hey, good what to so see we you. can see, uh, is it, uh, uh, not, uh, sorry to ask this, uh, Sure. This is live on, on radio? So, no, this is actually live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And then after after the, the show ends, the, the live broadcast, the replay stays up on those same platforms. And then we upload it to podcast format so you can yeah, hear on Spotify. Yeah, because I, um, I tweeted about it, and I thought it was on all those. So I tweeted several yeah. times recently. And, uh, God dang it, the shuttle. Sorry. Oh no, you're I'm good, man. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. Well, we do it's have perfect, we dude. have we have people in the chat room, so they are listening and yes. watching, and they'll pop. We'll oh, ask some questions from yeah. from your fans in the chat room if that's all right. You're looking good, and man, your hair has gotten so long. You know what? It's it, I have to say it's out of laziness, and uh, <laughs> my main hair hair chick moved away, and then uh, I just kind of like said. Just let it go, man. I don't Looks know. good. I like it. It, man. it kind of reminds well, me of what C's, like, like CC Deville. I talked up about a, a few weeks ago, and uh, then the other girl wasn't available. So, 
I like it. I hope you keep it. It looks good. Oh, kind of I hate when the hair girl moves away. <laughs> I do. That's a problem. She does, and you know what? She does it. You know? Yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, what C.C. DeVille's hair looks like right now. You yeah, know? totally. Totally. Well, yeah, let's... yeah I, I know. I'm glad to see his, his hair got long. And, yeah. Because he always had a thing with his hair like, oh, I can't grow my hair. <laughs> <laughs> well it's very rock and roll well, well let's talk about a little bit more besides hair we um first things first let me introduce you to everybody scott's on the end nine is in the middle my name's Jana. we're three local musicians from tulsa oklahoma we started doing this uh stream about three years ago and it's just a delight to get to talk to you tonight and first well, things first because we've had a lot of people say find out how he's feeling so are you all healed up from your injuries are you feeling 100 percent well, I've never broke anything in my life, knock on wood. Right. And um, last June, I think it was, um, I just, well, I was sleeping, uh, as people do, and I just rolled off, I, like in my sleep, I rolled off the bed, and man, I cracked like three Ouch. ribs and broke one. And man, for, yeah. if you've never had a broken rib, that sucks. And there's no healing, There's you can't put a patch on it. And man, it took a good, probably good three months to get done with that. Wow. Ouch. Yeah, and then, so everything's cool. I kind of recovered from that. And then this last, uh, I came to Louisville in early November, or um, late October. And I was, it was a night of one of the final games of the World Series. And I love baseball. Yes. And especially when playoffs and World Series. So I, I, I go, man, where can I go watch this? And I, so they go, oh, go down. It's like three blocks. And so I start walking. And man, I, I was walking fast because the game had already started. And I, just tripped and fell, man, and cracked Shit. my left hip and Damn. the femur the, at the top Ouch. of that thing that goes in there or whatever it is. And man, I didn't think anything about it, but I couldn't get up. Wow. And the guy, security dude came along and goes, hey man, are you okay? I go, no, I can't get up. Oh, so wow. I went to the hospital and, uh, you know, x-rays and two days later, made big time surgery, man. They knocked me out and wow. they put like a pipe in my leg or whatever that is now you kind of first started out um uh being a pitcher is that right i, I played baseball like crazy when i was a kid from starting you know you know uh minor league then majors senior mi majors senior minors senior majors i played all the way up until i was like 16. So it was cool. great yeah. yeah it's fun we're going to get more into sports talk because we're we're sports fans ourselves and it's fun to talk about Big about different things fans, yeah. absolutely man so so I, I had a guy say please ask him is he still on break from kingdom come are you still on break with those guys well we never officially said we're going on break okay um, after the COVID thing our 2020 was was just jam-packed with shows and um uh a lot of great festivals and of course we know what happened with COVID. Then 2021, it started coming back, but I mean, we just did a few shows because all the ones we had for 2020, we had about 40 something. They all got postponed or canceled or whatever because Japan, Germany, and uh, Europe, uh, Scandinavia. And then uh, 2022, kind of the same thing. A whole lot of them didn't come back. So um, we did do a few in 2022, made up some, but it's just not raining shows right now and yeah. we're not pushing it we kind of let things come to us so we're doing that and we're in talks with amongst the band about you know doing some new songs right because um so we're not like going oh my god we got to play we're like when it comes to us we'll take it sure sounds like a good plan yeah, absolutely yeah. Scott, let, let me know like how did you guys first get in, into with with bob rock to produce your first album uh kingdom come I mean, that's yeah, just like a major score right off the bat for you guys. Well, uh, a little history here. Um, I I went on a cattle call audition, and there was like 50-something other drummers, and uh, I got it. And the bass player and guitarist was Danny and Johnny. They were already there, and it was Lenny, and there was another guitarist. Then uh, that guitarist wasn't working out. We got uh, Rick Steyer in, and during this time, the, uh, the producer... I mean, I'm sorry, the guy who signed the, the, signed the band was actually Lenny to Polygram. He uh, he mentioned the name Bob Rock, and we're like, oh, man, you know, because he hadn't, at, at that point, he was the engineer for Bruce Fairbairn, who, of mm -hmm. course, did Bon Jovi and all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. right. And um, so we were like his first band band that he he was at the helm. And, man, it, it, it blew up. And... Uh, I mean, so there's that Bob Rock kind of got on the map 
from Kingdom Come, which I'm very proud of. But man, he was phenomenal. He brought out the very, very best of us. And then, of course, he went on uh, the Kingdom Come. We were on tour in '88. It's funny after the gig and Monsters of Rock in L.A., somebody comes, "Hey, man, somebody's here to see you." To my dressing room, and in comes Tommy Lee. He goes, "Dude, who did your album?" I'm like, "Yeah." Bob and, then, wow. and then Doctor Feelgood. Get him for our next album, the next album was Doctor Feelgood. Wow! So they went to fifty because you know Bob Rock went on to do, do Metallica and this one and I'm Jesus Christ. Lots, of, so lots of good and, stuff. That's yeah, incredible. I love stories like that. <laughs> it, it, it's just it's crazy that you know you 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 get Bob Rock, and then your album goes gold the day of its release, and uh, then uh, go figure. And then you right. and then you go on the Monsters of Rock. Uh, tour with Metallica yeah. and the Scorpions. You end up in the Scorpions later on, but yeah. you know, but that album, you know, turned Motley Crue on to what you know got Doctor Feelgood, and that was a number one album. And, yeah. and then you end up marrying into Tommy Lee's, you know, family. <laughs> I mean, it's just a small world for you. You know how everything just kind of turned so, out. You're right. It, it is so sm small. And uh, actually, that night, uh, that gig the monsters of rock gig at the la coliseum and it, it, for those who don't remember but kingdom come we opened then metallica then doc and then scorpions then van halen oh. and tommy uh you know was talking to me about bob rock and stuff he goes man dude come down to gazari's tonight my sister's playing i'm like going i was fried man i was tired <laughs> and i go oh okay cool i'll see you down there and, and i went i went back to the hotel and took a nap and i got up and i went down there and tommy He's wait at the front door. He goes, dude, come here. He takes me up. And we go upstairs. He goes, hey, this is my mom and dad. I'm like, going, okay, cool. Wow. I thought it was a major <laughs> sister. <laughs> so he took me back and I met her. And she's like, oh, oh hey, dude. That was it. <laughs> wow. But then, so you know, we ended up talking and, you know, things happen. So just out of curiosity, what's a Christmas or a holiday over at Tommy Lee's house? <laughs> I mean, is that anything that you guys ever do? You like have like Christmases and holidays over at his place or? Yeah, how... I mean, we did that that, that a lot. Uh, you know, since then, Athena and I have uh, split part of ways. Yes. But yeah, you know, he had his, uh, his kids and we had our kids and we'd go over there and visit on Thanksgiving, Christmas and, you know, kind of a normal just what you would think it would be if, I hmm. mean, I, I thought it was kind of normal, except yeah. when we dropped the turkey, taking it out of the oven. And we didn't <laughs> it. <laughs> it happens. You know, of course, us fans, we think it's just going to be some wild get together, you know, but it's no. probably, you know, the complete opposite. Yeah. Completely tame. They're normal yeah. people yeah. too. Tommy's not whipping it out over the Christmas <laughs> no. dinner. Oh, God. No. <laughs> no, but uh, actually, uh, part two to the story, uh, uh, Athena and I did get married in Tommy's living room, and um, wow. the, the only people there were there were the uh, other four Scorpions, um, huh. and a couple other people, and uh, so go figure. Who knew? So, right. so tell me, so so I know stuff happened kind of fast for Kingdom Come, but then it kind of came to an end quickly as well. I know when you look online, it says that in '89 Kingdom Come broke up for personal reasons. What is your opinion? What's your take on why things ended in '89? Well, um, since I've, I've, I've talked to the guy about it before, you know, Lenny is a, a incredible musician, incredible singer, songwriter, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But he didn't have a very pleasant way with, with, the, with the media and the press. You know, I mean, we, I remember we were doing People Magazine and they were asking them, you know, typical People Magazine type questions, general mm -hmm. stuff, nothing about, you know, music. And, and he was like, going, what are you asking me this for? Mm -hmm. And he would go off on him not and he didn't realize he was being that way it just came off that way right so we didn't get a very fav favorable uh oh there we are there you um, are <laughs> and uh we didn't get a very favorable favorable reputation with the media because he was doing most of the interviews and um so i mean that was a bit of it and it just you know um I, I, partly our manager was going through a divorce at the time and he wasn't really he started off mega hands-on and then he kind of like wasn't around and you know, it's like letting the uh, letting the um, inmates run the asylum. At mm -hmm. that point. Right. Mm -hmm. no, that but, uh, had to be a yeah, bummer. I, had to be a yeah, bummer I, for I, you. I huh? It had to be a bummer for you to suddenly you just go to an audition, you make this band, your album blows up, and then like in just a matter of time. 
Yeah, well, we did the second album, In Your Face. We did that with Keith Olsen, who's another phenomenal producer. You know, Keith did White Snake and, uh, gosh, uh, Fleetwood Mac and, and uh, he, uh, the Rick Springfield and the Foreigner and you name it. And um, so we were in good hands on the second album, too. But by then, the damage had kind of been done with the media, but it still sold a lot of records, and we toured yeah. and went all over the place. So. Uh you know? I love the video for uh, "Do You Like It." Mm -hmm. It's just so oh, cool. Oh yeah, that was a two-day shoot, man. Oh and, wow, uh, it was that was great though. I, I, every second of it. That's so cool. A lot, a lot of fans, a lot of shit blowing around all over the place. Oh my god, but that was like this 450 Chevy engine mounted on a thing that they were oh, wow. the movie people, and it was really blowing the stuff. And that stuff really did hurt, but it was wow. fun. So, so when I heard your story, I, maybe our viewers don't know it. I'd like you to retell it. But I was a little surprised at, at what made you fall in love with the drums. Would you share that with our viewers? How you how you discovered the drums and what made you love them? Um, you know, it, it was funny. I started playing trumpet like in third grade, maybe fourth grade. I always get that wrong. And at the time, we lived pretty close to a department store, and the department store was going out of business, and it was like really odd they had bands there like every day and then they had bands every night like bands playing cover songs like you know the hits of the day and man i would you could sit like 15 20 feet away from the drummer and watch and i was just mesmerized tell you i'd never mm. seen a drummer up close and although i just started playing trumpet i go man i want to play drums yeah so uh, coincidentally my brother's friend had a drum set for sale for 50 bucks my mom fronted me the money i cut a lot of lawns for that <laughs> and I just started and I was just obsessed with it, you know? Yeah. And um, it's one of those things Then I discovered the Grand Funk Railroad live album. And I listened to that eight track tape over and over, and yeah. learned that drum solo and everything about it. And, uh, you know, I, it was just one of those things. I just, I was just passionate and flipped out over it. I, I never would use the word passion before, but I guess it works. You know, I, it takes a special talent and it takes, you have to really be in good physical condition. You have to have a lot of stamina to, to play the drums. What would your advice be to someone who is new to the instrument, who wants to play them? And like, what advice would you give them to really stick with it and until they kind of get over that learning curve and get through the hump there? Uh, stay in school. Stay in no, school. <laughs> uh, man, uh, honestly, join That's a funny. band as fast as you can because that is the fastest thing to get you like oh my god i gotta learn this song oh i don't know how to play it well i better learn it and then right. give it to you guys you know it, it doesn't matter whether they're good or they're older or younger anything just get in a band that's my best advice and also take some lessons man sure. i had lessons for like about a year and a half my dad paid for it thank you yeah and uh <laughs> but it was just all this rudiments i never touched a drum set it but I'd get home and I'd just put on Led Zeppelin IV, the eight track tape, yeah. and play like crazy. And you had supportive parents too. That helps to have really supportive parents. Yeah, yeah well, my dad played him and beat the organ. He played these dinner clubs and my mom was the coolest ever. And uh, she was always, you know, I mean, I'm down there beating drums. It's like blaring up through the house. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she said, I'd always say, hey, do you mind if I play? No, go down there. Oh, that's great. That's so yeah. cool. Makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell uh you know in today's world you know you're playing with so many bands and there's you know you have the online you know rock sites and they're always putting out all of these articles and a lot of them are you know are just kind of unfavoring the musician himself you know of course you got this the, the sweden rock festival thing that happened and everything and, and how does one at at your level deal with these type of criticism criticism on a constant basis you know there I, i'm fortunate i haven't had a whole lot of criticism over the years um yeah but they're gonna say on your best day i mean even scorpions right. we got reviews that said maybe they should hang it up and this stuff like that and mm -hmm. you know in one ear and out the other you ignore it sweden rock i had some major problems i thought i could pull that one off but that was, I, I had just broken these ribs maybe like a week before. Yeah. And I went there and I thought, oh, no problem. I'll just plow through it. And I had a little problem with that. Um, I, and, you know, a couple uh, people, you know, said some things about it. And like, rightfully so, I had a terrible show. And that's one out of the thousands. So you just kind of go, oh, well, cool. Here, wait for the next show and move on. And 
I, I just, I, I never would say I take it with a grain of salt because you do have feelings about it, but you can't dwell on it. You just read it and you go, oh, okay, cool. Right. Move on. Seems to me like the best thing is just almost not to even read it. I mean, especially now with social media, it's so oh, brutal and people are just, they're so brave because they can hide behind their keyboard and it's just really ruthless. And I find when I tune out from it, I actually feel better. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like that, but it's almost impossible between Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, et cetera. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost impossible. Somebody's going to say something or yeah. there's going to be a review and or there's going to be this or there's going to be that. So you just kind of got to go with the flow anymore. And uh, sure. it used to be, I mean, you know, before all this interweb stuff, um, uh, Al Gore called it the interweb, by the way. <laughs> and uh, you go, you, you just, um, you know, you would do an interview and you wouldn't even read it or see it for like, you know, a month or two when right. it come out yeah. in the magazine or Rolling Stone or wherever. It's immediate and, uh, now. Yeah. Huh? Immediately now. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of cool on one hand and if it takes a lot of the mystery out. I mean, I follow some some yeah. people on on uh, Twitter and, and Facebook that I, I follow Gene Simmons, of course, and Paul Stanley. And mm -hmm. I mean, they post like almost every day, but mm -hmm. it's interesting because you kind of feel like you know them because I actually have met them guys several right. times, really good, good people. But then you read on read it, and it's a whole different, uh, it's a whole different uh, way of looking at them, you know. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Yeah. Like one of the news uh, articles I I read is you know when you spent you know what thirty three days in in jail um, overseas or in, in a different country, I forget what country it was. Was it India? I think. No, Dubai. 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 Wow. And and you said something that you know I guess you're wanting to release a, a book about your time there in, in jail and everything. Um, how far uh, are you serious about uh, releasing a book over that? Oh, oh absolutely. In, in the book, it, it, I, I just started, you know, keeping a, a, a daily, like, what, what do you call Not diary. What do you call it? Like a, a like a blog. No, uh, well, not even a blog. I didn't have just a daily email. ledger or something. Ledger, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you know, I, I started writing and you know, and I, and I go, I go, and I started writing and kept writing. And next thing you know, I had a, like 190 pages front and back that I'd written and I just kind of covered everything. I mean, it, it covers, you know, I hop back and forth, kind of like Pulp Fiction that did, like where I start off, you know, uh, you know, talking about, oh my God, how did I end up here? And then going back to where I started and then I'm talking about this and talking about my kids, talking about Scorpions, talking about this band, that band, and everything in between. Because I always thought about, mm, you know, I've read all kinds of books. I've read Slashes and Sammy's and, and Duff. Duff's book is excellent yeah. for everybody out there. And this book and that book. And, you know, because I've spent a lot of time traveling, apparently. And I spent a lot of time reading. I'd download a book and download it here. I'd be on the runway going, oh, I finished this one, get another one. So this, I would really love to put it out. And um, maybe I'll, I'll post the first chapter again because I did and I got a lot of positive feedback. But, you know, we'll see what goes on, you know, if anybody out in publishing land is interested because it's not about money because right. there is, but pub, unfortunately, the book business has kind of gone the way of the the. Uh, music business, you yeah. know, not a bookstore, hardly anywhere. Right, right. Um, so how were you treated when you were in, in jail? Or if this is something you don't want to talk about, just let us know. No, I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, well, I um, I got, I, they came came to me because I was laughing and they told us we uh, we were in the wrong, the wrong holding area to go out to the plane. And we'd been sitting there for like about an hour and I was with our bass player. And I, I went up to ask him again, and she looked at the ticket. She goes, "You're in the wrong place. You sh you're in the wrong terminal. You're going to miss your plane if you don't run." And I go, "Oh, what the f?" I said, "You know." I mm. went like that. Not. I didn't think a second second thing about it. So I went back and sat down. And here comes a minute later, the the police guys coming in, and uh, in their plain clothes, and they go, "Excuse me, come here." And I went, and then I walked, and they walked some more, and they started talking. Then they ended. I ended up in their. Um, little precinct in the in, in the uh, thing and they kept talking and they go oh well you're gonna have to come with us I go what okay and next thing you know so I was over at the airport jail wow. and uh, none of them really spoke English at all so they had got a guy who was, who was a prisoner there if you want to call it prison 
And he came out, he, he was an American dude from LA, and he tra had to translate for them. And um, somehow he knew their language. So mm. uh, one day went by, then two, then four, then six, then seven, then five, and you know, they, I had to go, I did a court thing and they go, okay, you're done in 28 days. I'd already been there like 26. When they wow. Holy crap, man. I know. So, so this is all because, is this all because you said fuck in the airport? Uh, no, I, yeah, because I insulted woman in the oh, world. Oh, wow. And because I went, because she told me that I go, oh, what the? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because um, I don't, I don't, never really cussed hardly at all. I just never did. I always had kids and stuff. And, right. and um, so it was just kind of a misunderstanding and that. And then they just, there wow. you go. Well, but I named for Tom Wisely. I, I exercised every day and uh, I, and I wrote constantly. And uh, that's, I, I really like to get this out. So I hope I'll you do. Way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. be, being in jail is scary. Yeah. Being in jail well, in another country. It, it, wasn't, but... it wasn't like, the, I was, I shared the so with the American dude and there was like uh, four, two bunk beds and we were the only ones in there. And the, they, the, the door to the cell never closed. And hmm. you could come and go and walk around the place and go outside. Oh, wow. All wow. that stuff anytime you wanted. And, um, and they had to leave them open because, you know, the Muslims pray five times a day. Right. So, and they do that. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, now I say it wasn't so bad, but man, it really, you know, it's more, mostly having your freedom taken away really sucks, you know, but there, yeah. you know, there was a pay phone, there was a this, and you know, I made the best of it while I was there. Good for you. I do hope that you, that you, or you write about it and put it out because totally. I mean, just as you said, I, you read, you read yeah. Duff's book and you read all those guys books. And so, you know, much like you, I can, I like to read musician stories because I can relate to them in a lot yeah. of ways and not, not that one particularly, <laughs> well, but yeah, I can yeah, relate yeah. to them, you know? So I always find those books interesting yeah, me too. too. Me too. Yeah. You know, uh, it was funny cause I, I read Ozzy's book. And Ozzy book was great, and it's interesting, pretty funny. But the whole time I'm reading it, I'm hearing his voice. I in my head. <laughs> and I, I, I read pretty fast, but reading his book, I had to read it like, well, you know. And then Sharon came to me. And, and wow. <laughs> Can you imagine an audio book version of that? How great would that be? Oh, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, let's talk about your time with Scorpions. Obviously, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming your relationship was built with them during the tours, the Monsters of Rock tour, and then that you guys toured with them on the Savage Amusement tour. So, when you actually came to be a part of that band, talk about that process. And did you mesh pretty quickly with them musically? And was Herman yeah. already out by then? Uh, well, no, no, that that's later. I'll, I'll give it to you in, in the Reader's Digest version. Okay. Uh, as you, I told you Keith Olsen did the second Kingdom Come album. Right. Then he signed my new band after Kingdom Come called Wild Horses. Our album went nickel. And uh, <laughs> we were going in to do our album with Keith because he was finishing up a project. And he came to me and goes, James, I'm so sorry. He goes, I have to take this project, this project band's coming in i go i go well if you have to do it he goes yeah i go what band he goes it's the scorpions Jeez. i go well of course so we had to wait another three months or four months before we could start our album but while they were there i lived about a mile from the studio and i'd cruise over there and visit and say hi to the guys and you know we had a rapport and then uh about a year or two later i, I did the uh, the third msg album with michael shanker and mm. uh then around 95 I was doing another album with Keith because he hired me to play on tons of albums. And he goes, hey, I want you to play on something. I go, what, what is it? He goes, I can't tell you. Mm. So he put it on and it was no vocals and there was like three or four songs. And I go, man, this sounds really familiar. Mm. You know, but it was drum machine. And and I go, yeah. so he goes, yeah, just put some drums on it. So I went out there and bashed out like three or four songs in a few hours. and. And I went to him and I asked him, he still wouldn't tell me about it, and it was the Scorpions. So then wow. fast forward to spring of uh, of 96, and uh, I got a call, and uh, it was a manager going, hey, man, would you be interested in coming over and having to play with the Scorpions? I go, wow. of course. So Amazing. I flew over, and it was like, hey, seeing some old friends, and uh, played, <laughs> and uh, you know, it just kind of worked out. And then a, a couple, few weeks later, they called and said, hey, would you want to do this summer tour with us? And I started... We started in May of that year and just toured like crazy. Incredible. But it wasn't like, poof, you remember the band. Then we went to do the Eye to Eye album in 97. Yeah. And at that point, then I was kind of like, okay, I'm in this band. 
That's awesome. And, and just the best guys. And I had a wonderful, wonderful experience. And uh, Herman and I actually left to uh, form his own record label, which a lot of people were doing at the time. And he uh, takes credit for getting me in the band, as does Matthias, as does Rudolph. Mm -hmm. So I'm flattered from that. And um, it was a wonderful, wonderful trip with those guys, man. It, it's a, it's it's so I, I don't know if it's ironic or or what it is, but you you know you, like you said you played with Michael Michael Shanker uh, MSG yeah. and then you, you played with Rudolph and, and those two guys you know you hear all these stories that they those two don't get along. I don't know if you you know had any kind of heard any wild stories about those two guys you know and. And I know, of course, Michael used to be in the Scorpions and all that, so I didn't know if... Yeah, you know, it's kind of typical sibling rivalry. I mean, they they have this ongoing, it's kind of like whatever, but Michael came and played with us on, on several shows. He played with us at Walken and uh, a few other hmm. festivals where he came out and played. So, I mean, they kind of drop all that stuff, but it, it is kind of funny to kind of watch it because I know they're, I, I can't take it too serious. It's just classic sibling rivalry, you know. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Both excellent guitarists, you know, in their own right, in their own, they have their own thing, man. And, you know, brothers will be brothers, I guess. Sure. And I, on that note, though, I will have to say I was really super sad to hear about the passing of their sister, Barbara. Yeah. Who I met many times in London, and she came over to a few shows in Europe, and I was really heart broken up to hear that mm. she was a really cool lady wow do you get to do you get to talk to those guys much do you, do you just stay in touch as friends yeah i mean uh um you know it, we stay in touch i went to see them play um when they played in la and they were great and you know we hey well, blah, 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 and all that right. stuff we talk email and uh, this will happen or that will happen i just talked to rudolph um, you know, via email a little bit ago because he moved to a far land far, far away. And, uh, mm. um, you know, and occasionally, you know, of course, holidays, hey, have, uh, Merry Christmas and all that sure. stuff. Sure, right. That's and, cool. Um, you know, so it, why when, when you leave a band or people break up from a band, all this animosity, I don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, it was just time we parted and, right. uh, well, people said, well, Kotak got fired. Well, actually, it kind of didn't go like that. And there were many, many other variables involved. And sure. I love those guys, man. They're yeah. still my have you Have you listened to the, the album Rock Believer? You know, I heard a few tracks on, you know, people are always posting things online. And man, it's great stuff. It's classic mm -hmm. Scorpions, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know, like you've been in the band for so long, if you would like critique it and go, well, you know, I would have done that differently there. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. It is what it is. Mickey's a great drummer. And yes, he it's, is. It's, he, he really lends himself great to the, he plays to the song, not to the, to, hey, I'm a drum star. Yeah. You know, and uh, man, this stuff's great. Yeah, the the tour where he does his drum solo and he does like the um, uh, you said I don't you said you went to the show I don't know if it was the same tour or not but we know where he does the uh, the jackpot thing you know for his drum solo and <laughs> jackpot, I, don't, I don't know what you mean yeah you know, like a slot uh, like a slot machine or whatever you it's know, probably we, on YouTube you could check it out it's yeah pretty cool. oh, I'll, I'll I'll look at it I didn't see, I don't remember seeing that because I saw him um, two thousand eight seventeen or eighteen maybe. Okay. okay okay yeah this was just the rock believer tour and then he does oh. like this thing where you know of course it hits a jackpot or whatever when he's playing his doing his drum solo and you you kind of did like your your thing on, on one one of the tours where you had like you know remaking of the out the scorpion albums you know love oh, it yeah, first yeah. you know and i thought that was pretty cool i was when i was always doing Thank research you. on you I, I came across that video and i was like wow you know you got the blackout with the forks in your eyes and all that stuff pretty brilliant yeah and the songs that i put in my solo because or songs that we didn't play live like like uh um i can't stay keep me in your eyes till right. i yeah. back to love you sorry um that's one of my favorite all time, if not the favorite favorite song of Scorpions. But they never wanted to play it live for some reason. Huh. Um, hmm. And uh, 
So I put it in my drum solo, so I got to play it every night. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And it was a good one. So you not only played with those guys, you've played with some other really cool artists as well. You already mentioned MSG. And you played with Warrant in 95 and Ashbaugh in 96. Why don't you share some cool memories about both of those projects being part of that? Sure. Um, I, I, the Warrant came about because uh, Kingdom Come and Warrant did our tour for our second album. We, we toured together, to co-headlining. And it was awesome, and Janie's just phenomenal to this day. R.I.P. Mm. Brother. Yes. And he, um, uh, uh, after that, uh, a, a couple years later, you know, we kind of stayed in touch. He lived close to me and Rick, and he wanted to do a uh, Janie Lane solo album. It was, he was going to call the project Jabberwocky, mm. and uh, somehow or another, Rick, he, I got asked to come over and play on it. And I, of course, I brought Rick with me, and um, we started working on his solo stuff. Then about that time. Um, Joey was kind of going out, uh, leaving the band. Joey Allen from Warrant, and mm -hmm. so was Stephen. They, I don't. They had some rough. They hit a rough patch, whatever. Yeah. And so Rick and I came in, and we did the Warrant Ultraphobic album. And uh, I'm very proud. I, I co-wrote four songs on there, including I wrote the riff to, to uh, Family Picnic, cool. and uh, wow. lots of lyrics and stuff. And uh, you know, I love that's still in my top five albums, Ultraphobic. Yeah. And uh, if you haven't listened to Warrant, this is the album to listen to because they did have their, you know, their early start of, you know, kind of being a glam type band. But man, they graduated. To now, is Ultraphobic the one that oh. has the song Stronger now on there? Yes. That's such a, that is such a beautiful song. Yeah. Dude, such Janie a beautiful would, <laughs> Janie would come in every day and go, hey, listen to the song I wrote last night. And you just sit down and you just go, that's phenomenal. Dude, that song is so day. pretty. So pretty. I, it was just even more phenomenal. I hate it when people think of Warrant just as the Cherry Pie Band, because oh in my God. opinion, Janie Lane was one of the absolute best songwriters of that era, and he often doesn't get enough credit. So. Jana, you are totally, or Jana, Jana? It's Jana. Jana. It's Jana. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah man, he, was, he was so talented, and what a great singer, great showman, great, every, he just was I had everything rolled into one. Yeah. Total package. Totally you, agree. You mentioned co-writing and, and, you know, your album of Kingdom Come went gold, uh, now platinum. And, and of course you were in the Scorpions for 20 plus years. What like of a drummer of your statute does, does do royalties come in play for you? Yeah, I am. Um, uh, thank God our, the manager for Kingdom Come set me up with BMI, uh, on the first album because I co-wrote uh, one song on there, the song Now Forever After. And, um, you know, we got a publishing advance at the time. It was like, uh, it was like $35,000. I was wow. like, what? but after taxes and agencies, <laughs> manager fees, sure. I ended up with 12. So oh, that's the music is the part. But you know what? From then, I always, even before that, uh, I was always, uh, insisted on writing and I was always sitting around with a guitar or a keyboard writing, writing, writing. And um, my first quote, big album, if you want to call it that, was with Ronnie Montrose in 1986. Mm -hmm. came, I think it came out in 87 and I co-wrote two songs on there. And wow. I, I was bitten, man. I, from that point on, I insisted. I always wrote and played guitar and sang. I, I suck on guitar. But I look really cool alive. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I'll be appearing here all night. Yeah, I'll be here all night. <laughs> um, and man, I just wrote and wrote and wrote. And uh, fortunately, I had outlet for that with the, all the bands I've been in. And um, you know, in Scorpions, I, I, I co-wrote on uh, the, fir the first album I played on on I, I and I, I co-wrote four songs on Unbreakable, which I'm super very proud of. Yeah. And I remember the day I brought in some lyrics to a song. Um, because we would record songs and stuff, and Klaus would have them, and he would kind of scat over them, but sometimes wouldn't have lyrics. So I wrote lyrics to Love Them or Leave Them, and he sang them verbatim. I couldn't believe it. Wow. And I was like going, when he was You were probably them, shitting, going, holy hell. Klaus was saying about lyrics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like, and I'd already been, to, been in the band at that point, maybe four or five years, and uh, wow. it's not longer. Um, wow. Now you felt so, like you're really part of the band, I'm sure, at that point, oh, man. He's singing my I like, song, man. I was like, yeah, Whoa. yeah, I can imagine. So, so kind of walk us through. I mean, because no one here has ever been, and not many in the world, you know, have been in in your shoes 
where you're in one of the biggest bands ever. Take us through a normal day with the Scorpions. <laughs> well, uh, a normal day, if we were in, in re re recording process and, or preparing for an album, we'd go out to the village where Rudolph lived and he had a studio in his basement and we'd go over there like around noon and kind of hang around, play a little, talk a little, talk a little more, play a little. And uh, but Rudolph was always would always have, hey, listen to this, listen to this, and uh, um, he he'd have something on tape, and then we take it, we go out and play it, and record a scratch version, and we kind of do that for days on end, and then um, then go in and make an album. I mean, this is a, I, I make it sound really short, but you know, it's, it took weeks at a time to get these songs together, and then pre-production where we'd actually rehearse them, and then actually go in and record them. And then touring was a whole other situation. We we were like a machine up and running so much that we would play for a couple of weeks. We'd be off a few weeks. We'd go back and we wouldn't rehearse. We'd go to sound check and run over some things and then just play a show. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it was Professionals. like a machine. And uh, But then, you know, we did have to rehearse and prepare for tours and stuff and, you know, rewrite the set list and, uh, you know, and that's the one good thing you mentioned about drumming and, and staying in shape and all that stuff. Um, I'm fortunate in that department because I always had to stay in shape because I, I, not only I'm drumming, I'm singing on almost every song. And, um, you know, it, it kept me in shape, man. I always had to really be conscious of, you know, uh, you know, not to overdo it. So right. It right. Right. Wow. It's amazing. You, know, you would think like, you know, you're an American and, and they're from German or Germany. Yeah. And was there any sort of any kind of a language, you know, barrier, any kind of a communication issue, you know, at first when you first joined them? Well, well, yeah, in, in rehearsals uh, or when I first got there, you know, in between the songs, they're, they're speaking German. Right. Mm. Oh, yeah, that would be odd. <laughs> well, I, I got to where I could understand it. They're talking about me. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, that's the first thing Yeah. And, uh, but I, you know, I got the CDs and I got the book and I tried and I really tried and I could, I could speak some broken German at the best, but with my, my, hey man, you know, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky and mm. you used to talk uh -huh. like this. It's a very right. difficult language to learn. I can barely speak English as it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and uh, their English was excellent. So anytime we were out of Germany, it was English 90% of the time, except amongst themselves wow. and a few crew guys. So I mean, that would be a trip to hear, sit there and listen to them talking like that to each other. Like, what the yeah, hell? That's yeah, crazy. I, I, I got to where I could understand a lot of it, uh, way more than I, I let them know. Mm -hmm. Wow. So let me ask you something. It's a little different topic. Scott, who's at the end of the table, and me, we, we are married and we're also in a band oh. together. And, oh, and I know that you also, I know you're not with her anymore, but you were in a band with Athena as well. Yeah. Now, I, I bring that up because I want to say I know what challenges this pre presents sometimes for Scott well, and wait, me. You're, you and Scott are in a band together? We yeah. are. We are. And they're, and they're married. Yeah. We, and we do oh, this stream together. So, but, okay. you know, sometimes there's challenges of being spouses in a band, but sometimes there's good things. What challenges did you find and what good things did you find being in a band with your spouse? Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, the, the only downside was we'd have, if we had a situation at home um, amongst her and ourselves or with the kids or, or just a general bad day, which we all have, um, you know, and then we go to rehearsal, it would take a little bit to shake it off, but you know, yeah. she could be on the drums. She'd take it out of the drums, man. She <laughs> bashes, man. She hits hard. Right. And um, so we kind of would leave that behind. And then, you know, it was kind of cool on tour. You know, we're together. We're hanging out. We're right. moving off. We're playing shows tonight. We're going here. We're going there. So that was always fun because she, she traveled with me a whole lot with the Scorpions. And, you know, we did our thing. Um, It has its ups and downs. And, yeah. uh, but as you probably both know, you have a little tiff and then you got to go play a show. Exactly. And after a while, it just kind of drip forgets, it goes away. And then after the show, you're like, well, what were we fighting about? You are 100% correct. I'll tell you the other challenge that at least 
I, I feel on my side, I never want my Uh-oh. bandmate. No, no, no. This is not about you. Actually, <laughs> I don't want my bandmates to feel like we're a two headed monster coming at them because a lot of times he and I will differ on opinions or, or right. approaches. And so it's all we from the get go. We've always tried to let our guys know that we're playing with. Hey, we're two separate people. We may be a couple, but, you know, we're in a business together. And like you said, right. you have to leave the personal stuff at home and go do the business out there. Yeah, and you know, yeah, ex- you you totally. That's exactly what I'd said. I would yeah. have said if I if I was told to say it. And um, it, it it is like that. And there were several times I can recall when when the bass player and guitarist were kind of like walking on eggshells because they knew they knew, <laughs> we knew each other so well. They knew that we'd been in a tiff right. just before we got the rehearsal or whatever. They know us really well. Sure, and, sure. But and they'd be kind of like, geez, you know. Yeah. Like I said, once you start playing, it all fades away. Uh, That's so true. Yeah. And that kind of leads me to my next question. And I, I don't know how many people have seen this. We actually just recently discovered this. I know this is like nine, ten years ago. You and Athena were part of Ex-Wives of Rock. And that show did not really do the ex-husbands any favors as far as it, how is it how it painted you guys. Obviously, reality TV is not always reality it's very oh, embellished but what you, you know what were your feelings about being part of that and then what were your feelings about the end product that ended up airing on television well season one it was talked about and i go sure why not and season two i i came in it came to be involved and um they were my character was more like the guy who drinks too much and is an idiot and screws things up basically if you want to put it in a nutshell so we, we would uh, be shooting a thing and where um, I, we'd go, who knows where we were, and we, I'd go up and pretend I was coming out of an apartment building, which wasn't my apartment. Right. And <laughs> go and get in the car. And he would tell me to say one thing, and he would tell her something else. But we didn't know what we were going to be saying. Gotcha. So like for one example, I, I remember I got in the car with her, and she was we were going to go somewhere, and, and she's starts driving, she goes, oh my God, you smell like booze. I go, no, don't, I haven't been drinking. She goes, yeah, you have, you know. And so at that point, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, really wasn't drinking, blah, 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 blah. And then another time, you know, I was out in the garage uh, at our house and um, <laughs> um, we were actually living together at the time, but we were ex, we were supposed to be together. Right. And I went out in the garage and I actually really did go out there to open some wine and uh <laughs> and i dropped the they were because they were just shooting something with athena inside and i was out in the garage and i really li- did drop the bottle and about that time the <laughs> producer my director whatever you call he happened to open the door and come out and he goes oh my god i go yeah he goes hey can you do that again oh geez <laughs> wow oh, man not. so we picked it up where the bottle was already broken and they opened the door and i was like down here like and look up at the camera that sort of thing so wow. and, you know, there was another time he, where you know i, I had I had a couple of drinks they, and he uh, comes up and goes you no know, james can you act a, can you act a little more drunk oh shit. <laughs> well yeah you know so the, the, that's the kind of thing the whole thing about it but i actually had a lot of fun shooting that stuff and you know uh that, that were some of the better times with Athena. Not yeah. always, but most of the time. You know, there was a lot of lot of personal uh, situations, you know, with, with your, you know, the divorce and, and the drinking and everything. And and did you ever feel like, wow, this, this is kind of painting me, I don't know, like the bad guy here. I mean, did you ever think in, like in long term it might, you know, hurt things like your career and things like, you know. Everything like you that. know, not not at the time, and and you have to remember, not everybody's watching that show. A lot of people are, but um, you know, I really didn't give it much thought about that because mm-hmm. I know the truth. You know, yeah, I've had a few bouts with, with booze over the years, but uh, you know, the what people don't know is all the years that uh, that I was sober, 2008 to 2011, and here mm-hmm. a year, and there a year, and uh, when we our kids were in the oven, and um, you know. I spent a lot of time not drinking, um, and then I had my moments when I did drink. Yeah, and that doesn't mean I'm falling down drunk, walking around with a bottle around the house. You know? Right. So, um, 
but I really didn't really give it a lot of thought. It was a lot of fun, and the band didn't really care whether I did it or not. You know. Well, what? I hope it. I hope it paid you well because you you definitely took a beating in that thing. And I I wanted to ask you. We know reality TV is it's just drama, but I you know I you never really know. Is there five percent truth here? Is there two percent? Is there ten? Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Well, you look and sound healthy. You do, and, man. And, and um, I'm just um, amazed and on 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 how you know, growth, you know, me, you know, I, I, I drank for 30 plus years and I'm, you know, over two years now sober. Um, I wasn't an everyday drink or anything like that, but you know, when I did do it, you know, I didn't, you know, I had a hard, hard time stopping, but now mm-hmm. I, you know, I do the, the bud zeros and everything like that to make me feel right. like I'm still kind of socializing a little mm-hmm. bit with everybody. So, you know, my hat uh, is off, you know, for you, um, yeah. you know, Definitely. Well, I'm not going to say I, I haven't I haven't drank anything because I've had over the last few months. You know, I went out to see some guys play, and I'm standing there, and everybody wants to buy buy, buy yeah. me a drink. Yeah. Right. No, no. Finally, I take and you know I have a couple glasses of white wine, and uh, and then I'm pissed at myself. And so there you go. It's yeah. a battle, and definitely the people around you they have to be on board with supporting you because I can tell you, man, alcoholism took a toll on our marriage and. Scott really, I, I'm just so proud of him. It is a battle and, and it's a demon and We're I know it's hard to beat. So, you know, just, we just encourage you. We, we, this show is a friend to you. We're a friend to you. We, we didn't come on here to, to bash you and ask you how much you're still drinking. It's none of our damn business. We just hope you're doing well. Well, thank you. And one of the guys I follow who's a really good inspiration is Mark Kendall from. Uh, All right. yes. yeah, we, yeah, we had him on here. Yeah, he's a great guy. I, God, I've known him forever. We run into each other, of course. And, uh, you know, he's like five years in and he makes no bones about it. And I, that's part of the reason I follow him. And, you know, I, I check in with him, and I, not one-on-one talking to him. I just follow him for that. That's a big reason why I do. Plus, it's got to feel good to be able to say, hey, I lived through the through doing stuff like that or whatever it is. And, and I, I survived it and I'm good. Yeah. Now. Not, hey, some, know, some of them end up like Bon Scott. Yeah. Uh, dude, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I, I wish I could say, oh, yeah, I've been sober for six years. It's, it, it hasn't worked like that for me. I've been in and out and in and out and in and out. And uh, mo- mostly uh, in, meaning not drinking. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've had my moments and, and, you know, it's an ongoing process. It's progress, sure. not perfection. As we say. One day at a time, my yeah. friend. Now, I know I know you played um, in Oklahoma City with the Scorpions at Rock in America. Um, you know, we're, we're well known for Rock, Oklahoma here. And I know Scorpions played here. And I think that was probably after, I think maybe Mickey played that show. But and then of course they play Tulsa. Do, um, do you have any memories of playing in Tulsa? Yeah, there's that. Uh, um, I don't want to. Don't have, there's. Uh, it's not a little. It's an amphitheater there, and it's great. We played there several times, and I always like playing there because it wasn't so big. It was a little scaled down. Yeah, that's gone now. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got rid of that. That was the River Park Amphitheater. Yeah, that thing they, was awesome. And they got rid of that. Yeah, a lot of cool bands right. played there. Yep. Why would they get rid of it? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? But All the good great, stuff goes away. One of my favorite little venues. Yeah, yeah that was great. a cool place. You know, yeah. I mean, like, oh, it's small. I mean, yeah. like, it was like not gargantuan. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we and need. I to... know Kingdom Come came. Um, I think it was the second 2008 year of Rock, Oklahoma, and they played. But I don't think I don't think you were back with them yet. Oh no no, but... no 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 no. We uh, I started talking with Lenny in 2010 because uh, we did a tour of Russia. It was. Kingdom Come, Alice Cooper, and Scorpions, and Lenny was around. We all were on the same plane together, and we talked and chit chat. And I said, "Man, why don't we um, do the band? Because Scorpions were saying farewell. We're going to be done in 2012 or 13." And then fast forward to 2013, and I'd already had been talking to agents, getting Kingdom Come back uh, on the map, and I had my my person, my project uh, Kotak going, and um, I was working on a thing with Kerry Kelly for a new Revenge. And I get a call. I say, "Hey, well, we're going to do another Scorpion album. We changed wow. the album. We're not going to retire." I'm like, "On." <laughs> now you <laughs> see, you see why no band should ever say farewell. That's right. Because none well, of them work out that way. 
None of them work out that way. Now, I'm going to get in trouble if I don't ask you some gear questions. One of our good friends, Kelly Ensley, he's a sound man and also a drummer here. He says, ask some gear questions, please. So lay it on us. Are you are you still endorsed by D drum and Yamaha drums? What's your what's your gear of choice these days? Um, Well, I was with D. I was with D drum for for a lot of years because my friend Elliot, who I knew from Tampa, Florida, back in, in the 80s, uh, ran D drum, which was partners with uh, Dean Guitars. So I did D drum, and um, because I wanted some Dean Guitars too, because I, I love <laughs> guitars. They made me like four custom uh, Explorers, and, nice. uh, and they were phenomenal. And then, um, but Elliot unfortunately passed away, and mm. things changed at the company. So I went back to DW in around 2014 i think it was so i got a few kits uh from them and they're excellent drums so i've been mm-hmm. kind of dw ever since but i still have the d drums d drums are really good drums i don't know yeah. if a lot of people say they're not cool so D i'm dw uh zildjian cymbals uh, for 28 years the only reason i know that is because they sent me a certificate a few years ago and said congratulations on 25 <laughs> years with zildjian wow that's, cool. that's, that's great. really cool so i know that's what i said and uh, those are head drumsticks, the black ones. Yeah. You take a tip off and you put a new thingy on. And um, uh, Aquarian drum heads. Okay. They're, they're, if you're a drummer out there, get Aquarian. They last forever. Yeah. Uh, even though I change my under, like every three shows. <laughs> but they, uh, they're they excellent for a drummer. They're better than any other drum head. Okay. I've been you, a, them you always get a great sound, man. Yeah, you always do. get a Thank great you. sound. But um, I, I wanted to ask you, I know that Kingdom Come, you know, you guys are always, when you get first came out, you were criticized about being, you know, sound too much like Led Zeppelin and, and you got a lot of, a lot of shit for that. And I know you, you, you embraced it because you were like, you took that as yeah. a compliment, you know, Hey, it's fucking Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Right. Was, right. <laughs> thank, thanks for telling me that, you know, that's a great sounding band. So. Um, but you know, and you got Greta, Greta Van Fleet out there and, and which right. now are kind of like walking the same shoes that you guys did, you know, when you first came out, do you feel like they, they're getting a free pass more so about sounding a lot like Led Zeppelin than you guys did? I wouldn't call it that. Cause man, they're an excellent band, man. Their stuff is, is killer. Um, at the time when Kingdom Come came out, there was also the white snake album. And um, right. uh, a couple others. I, I think they even went after Great White a little bit for sound like Zeppelin. And uh, um, I, and I, it was like when it rains, it pours, and it was uh, something to jump on, I guess. And uh, uh, but go Greta Van Fleet, man. Those guys are great. And they actually mentioned Kingdom Come a couple times in some in a few of their interviews. Wow. Said it to me. That's and cool. um, because they're getting so much flack. Yeah. But hey, man there's room for everybody and and they're like a great up and coming band man they're going to be around for a long time yeah maybe so just, anyway, maybe the right could... amount of years had passed you know maybe the led zeppelin people didn't want to hear another band sound like led zeppelin so quick after led zeppelin broke up and maybe enough <laughs> years really passed yeah no yeah, maybe enough years have like... passed now all these years later that people are like oh wait that sounds like led zeppelin that's cool right <laughs> you but know? also about that time um the old uh, Robert Plant had just put a solo out, uh, album out the same year our album came out. Mm-hmm. So he was in the press all the time. We were in the press all the time. And a um, uh, quick side story. <laughs> we went to see Robert Plant, uh, Kingdom Come. We were, we were off on a night in London. And Robert Plant was playing at one of these theater places. And we went there. And he, we got right, right when he started. We're out in the audience, you know, kind of in the back watching. And he, the first thing he said about four songs in, he goes, hello, you know, I'm Robert Plant, blah, 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 blah. Uh, goes, oh, and by the way, I hear the Kingdom Come Boys are here in the house tonight. Maybe you guys will learn something tonight. Oh, uh, wow. wow. I would have wow. taken that as a compliment. Uh, I, 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 like he called us out, man. He acknowledged us. Yeah, That's exactly. Incredible. That's exactly right. That's incredible. Hey, we've got a viewer question from Aaron Griffin. He says, can James tell us who Jimmy Ratchet is? Do you know oh, what that means? Okay. That's my alter ego. <laughs> Jimmy Ratchet is a, a, a guy I created because in my before Kotak was Kotak, it was called Crunk, and it was it was kind of like I wrote a bunch of songs because when Green Day Dookie came out, 
Yeah. Man, that album just killed me because I always kind of loved punky type type stuff, and that was the ultimate punk pop album. And I also loved Cheap Trick, though. Yes. So Grunt came along, and I was writing all these songs. And Athena was like, "Oh, well, man, you, who are you going to get to play drums, and who are you going to get to play bass?" And I, I never thought about it. So I went and did an album. I got a friend of mine, uh, actually Rick, played guitar on it. Rick Steyer. And Athena goes, "Well, I'll play drums." I go. Well, of course, she's a great drummer. Right. And, um, uh, but I didn't want to go by James Kotak because I wanted to be somebody new, like, uh, uh, like, like Garth Brooks, Jim, uh, what would he, what did he call himself when he yeah. tried to be there? Chris Gaines. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I just kind of went with it and, and, uh, I think it was, well, you gotta make, have a name. And, uh, I don't know where Jimmy Ratchet came from. Huh. The truth, but now we know. And, uh, it seemed to work because also it's it's kind of like Alice K- K- Cooper way of thinking. You know, he's he's himself during the day. Then he goes to the back of his bus or goes into his dressing room. He mm-hmm. puts on his makeup and he becomes Alice Cooper. Right. You know? Makes sense. He, he said that many times. And uh, yeah, he's really like that because he's a super nice, cool guy. Oh, yeah, he loves golf. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's a golfing, golfing mm-hmm. addict. Now, now, the person that hooked us up with you, and I Andrea. really, I don't know if it's Andrea Janae or Janet. I, I'll, yes. Someday I'll, it's, you know who Andrea is, correct? Yes, and I want to say, make a shout out to her. I wanted to say thank you very much. Um, and uh, I really, really appreciate it. Yes. She had also hooked me up on another interview about a week ago. And unfortunately, I could not. Get, get into my phone it was a disaster Aww. whatever i ended up missing the the interview so i i owe you one chat we're Andrew. glad you're here tonight then well yeah, she's got well, a you. she's got a question for you you may or may not know the answer to this she says when is kingdom come starting to make new music well we're actually talked about that we recently and uh um you know everybody goes well I'll go make an album well i'm like i'm more like leaning more towards well let's just do like three songs put one out see how it goes then we'll make an album um, because anymore you can do that. You can try before you buy and sure, and right. the waters because Kingdom Come is a band that's been before and we don't have Lenny. We have Keith St. John on vocals. Mm-hmm. It's a totally different animal. Right. We're the same, the four of us. Um, and Rick is like write a million riffs, Rick. And uh, <laughs> we all write. Everybody in the band writes. And uh, so we'll, we'll get to that. It's coming. It's like I said, we're not pushing so hard to quote a great song right and um we'll see how it goes here cool, cool. Sounds uh, elizabeth english talcott she, she's in the chat room she's she's made a lot of uh i guess what do they call those chats i don't know but anyway she says uh people still love to buy rock star books mm-hmm. amazon yeah. baby i guess Hell that yeah. was over your book yep. um, yeah um can't oh you already, you already asked that one um Love me some warrant, uh, gel in the San Fernando Valley days. Um, he put a heart on that. I'm not sure why. These so, are viewer comments yeah. that are coming in. Some comments. Uh, James is looking and sounding good and healthy. Yes. Love it. Yes. That's I just awesome. The no, I was go. gonna say, did, did somebody <laughs> let Whoa. somebody let cousin it into that, the room? That hair it it is really long. Jeez. <laughs> I, I have uh, uh, Jerry Crinenden says um, I met James in the late nineties. That Sound Warehouse seventy four South Pin with Warrant in late Janie Lane. How did the Warrant drum position come available? Mm. Well, like I said, uh, uh, myself and Rick Steyer live pretty close to Janie, just like yeah. just a couple of miles away, and word get travels fast. And uh, I'd heard about Janie wanting to do some solo stuff, and somehow. Uh, my name came up and uh, Rick comes in and we started writing with Janie and then it wasn't really moving the way Janie wanted it to. We recorded all kinds of songs. Those songs are great. And um, then it just kind of morphed. Uh, we kind of morphed into into Warrant because, uh, like I said, uh, out, uh, uh, Joey Allen and Stephen Sweet were on the outs with them. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, and it just kind of happened. Mm-hmm. which I'm thankful for it. I loved every minute of it. No kidding. Travis Arnold asks, does James stay in touch with Herman Rarebell? Yeah, he, Herman came out to quite a few gigs here and there, over there in, in Germany mostly. And uh, he come around, he's, you know, we were friends uh, since from the day we met. He's a super nice guy. And um, 
it's not like we chit chat on the phone, uh, but we, you know, we talk when I see him. You know, you know, I've been sitting here all night looking at that gold album on the wall and still can't figure out what it's for. What oh, is that's that? for that. First Kingdom Come Out. Okay. Around nice. okay. Coincidentally, the co I just happened to set the computer up right here. With no, that that's perfect. Yeah, I just couldn't <laughs> make it all out. I was trying to, been looking at it the whole that's show. That's called going, product placement, I, I, guys. I, I see the album cover on, there on the left. Well, your eyes are yeah. better than mine, yeah. apparently. No, so. I, 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 I'm back in Louisville because, man, I did all this physical therapy and I stopped for a bit and then I came back to finish it. And rightfully so, because they said in the very beginning, they said, if you don't do all this physical therapy, you may walk with a limp for the rest of your life. Oh, wow. Like, oh, uh -uh. Uh -uh. So I've been really disciplined. I've been, went to every appointment. Tomorrow okay. will be my 21st visit with my, uh, It's uh, I call it the chiropractic spa, because I go and I get massaged, mm. 50 stretching, go on this wacky table and electrodes on my back. Then wow. the doctor uh, manipulates me, but it's, it's very passive. It's not like your typical... Right. Nothing. So we'll keep that up. I've yeah. got one last question. Well, it's it's close to the end of the hour, so we thank you for all the time you've given us. I do want to ask you uh, what your opinion for anyone that wants to get into this industry. What advice can you give as far as like what to stick to your guns on and what pitfalls to watch out for? Uh, you know, if, if you, in uh, in the old days, we did it like this. It's a totally different world now. You know, uh, you can you can you can make your album in your bedroom, in your living room, wherever you want to make it. You can take it, you can put it out yourself all in the same day. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, if if you can get with a record label, please do, man. I mean, mm -hmm. my uh, middle son Miles, he has a band called Bad Sons, mm -hmm. uh, S U N S. They're phenomenal. They put they put out two albums. They toured uh, with some pretty major bands. They've been on Jimmy Kimmel. However, they're with a they were with a major uh, one of the largest independent labels, and of course I can't think of the name of it right now. And so it's great to have that. But if you don't have it, do it on your own, man, and just get it out there, man. Right. That's the most important thing. So sure. move forward and, and do it yourself if you can't do it with a record label. Because sure. somebody will come along and hear it or see it and go, oh, they're great, man. Let's sign them. Or you, but you don't really need a record label anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's, don't give away your publishing. That's now, right. Now, you were married into the Motley Crue family. And just recently, uh, they let go uh, Mick Mars. Do you, what's your thoughts on, on that? You know, gosh, I mean, I, I think Mick, Mick has been in the band for 40-something years. A lot mm. of stuff can happen. Just like me with the Scorpions with 21 years, I mean, uh, just in the last few years, our, our manager, our tour manager, and one of our main promoter guys all passed away within six months. Mm. That changed the whole dynamic of the band. And things happen. And there's many things we'll never know about, about what's going on between Mick and the guys. And mm. who knows? But sometimes it's just... You know, uh, uh, I know Mick has his spinal problem, and mm -hmm. who knows? Man. Plus, he's he was all, he was much older than the rest of them anyway. Yeah, I remember that when I first met him. Uh, you know, I think he, he was in his thirties. Right, and, right. <laughs> the rest of them are like 23, 24, 22. You know, who knows? That bands are like a marriage; they go through things up yeah. and down. And, uh, Absolutely, I'm sure it worked out the way it did for a reason. Yeah, it just seems like a lot of the lot of a lot of people online are you know really a, attacking Motley. I, I love Motley, you know, and too, and I'll, I'll still support them, you know, with John Five, yeah. and and I'm not that kind of guy that's just going to go out and, and just uh, you know keep uh, spinning the wheels on on everything that on you know that's bad out there, you know. But uh, I just hope the best for Mick and hope the best for Motley. Me you too. Know? Me too. Heck yeah, man! And, and I don't, I don't, I don't comment on any of that stuff. I just pass over it on on all the social media because who am I to say anything about it? Uh, you know, um, I love. I saw Motley Crue. So Scorpions and Motley toured together in I think early two thousand, uh, and that was a wonderful. We had a blast that summer. I love Nikki. I love all that. And that was Randy was the drummer. RFP. Oh yeah! Wow. And, um, uh, that was, we just had a blast, and they were great every single night, man. You know, and. Uh, and all this stuff about them using tapes and stuff. Screw everybody, man. Amen. I, I don't think they are. I don't yeah. think they ever did. 
You are such a gentleman. Thank you for being so cool to us and being so great to to uh, talk to tonight. If people want to, I know everybody watching wants to stay in touch with you, wants to support you, wants to be a, a champion of all things James Kotak. What is the best way for people to keep up with you? Just your your Facebook, your Twitter. Is that what do you prefer? Twitter. I'm at a at J Kotak. Uh, Facebook. There's there's my main one, uh, which is James Kodak, and there's, uh, I don't know, I'm doing something like that. And then I have a, a fan, James Kotak, which I don't go on very much because it feeds off the other one. And then I'm on Instagram, James R. Kotak. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, just hit me up anywhere, man. And, uh, I, and, and I really do answer most everyone's messages anytime I can. I, and, uh, I believe that you're you're a very well, cool guy. Thanks for yeah. being so great to to those of us here on Tulsa Music Stream. James, we're pulling for you. Anything you need, just hit us up. You've got our email now. Looking forward to that book too. Yes, sir. Yeah. And there's lots of yes, comments. Sir. There's lots of comments here um, on the Facebook uh, stream. So if you feel free, feel free to get in there and answer some of the questions you if bet. you want, or hit like, or say thank you, or whatever. I'll send you the link yeah, after I'm, afterwards. You're talking about your Tulsa uh, Tulsa music. Tulsa Music uh, Stream. I'll send you the the link to the interview yeah. uh, after we get off the air. Yeah, but I want to go on your Facebook now. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, Tulsa yeah. Music Stream on Facebook. Yep, that's us. All right, I'll see you there. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank Scott, you. And I have to go number nine. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. I'm a Beatles guy. I got you. You're awesome. Yeah, it was a real pleasure. You guys are fun. And, Thank you uh, so much. You look and sound great. Yeah, yeah, you do. We're pulling for you. Thanks, James. Have a great night. Walk and roll forever. Yes, See sir. you, buddy. Yes, bye, bye. All right. Awesome, dude. Awesome. That was cool. Man, what a great freaking guy. Yeah, that was fun. Never yeah. ever believe reality television, y'all. No, I mean the Bachelor is not real. No. You know, no. I, I when I was doing research uh, of James, I, I went through, of course, YouTube. I go through YouTube a lot and try to find things, you know, in recent interviews and things like that. And I came across and I was going to talk to him about that, but we ran out of time. And there was a few few um, videos that he did on YouTube and, and he did like a Bonzo bash hmm. uh, in 2013 where he did some Led Zeppelin, oh, wow. some stuff and, and um, just cranked it out man the guy's an amazing drummer he really is is. yes and and he's got an amazing sound and amazing technique you know what he does with the drums and then he also did a tease me please me with uh with nita strauss and she was on she was on bass oh wow she was on bass guitar and they had another guitar player guy and they were just like in some room and they were just jamming and and uh, the guy was just and he sang he sang all you know all tease me please me while i was playing the drums i wish i wish she would have told me hey wait don't let him go yet because that would have been fun to ask about yeah, and um and there's like an uh, an odd video of them pl- playing you know i don't know if it's in germany or where 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 it is but it was like a live performance and you know how overseas like they're like their shows you know live performances where like the crowds were like will be dancing yeah. and doing weird stuff you yeah, know yeah, yeah. They, had, they had people like off the side and they were kind of like kind of dancing all huh. odd and then and then they got done playing their song and it was still loving you and then they came off the stage the th- uh, three of them Rudolph uh Claus and and, and Jabs or Matthias Matthias whatever yeah. and, and they sat down with the hosts and you know and, oh, it's it cool. very odd huh. looking you know that's cool <laughs> yeah definitely uh, look look up some of his his solos and stuff online the guy is a monster in a good way he's for he's sure a, yeah he's definitely one of the top drummers out and there and he likes baseball we forgot to talk about our yeah, baseball team. Yeah, man. He's a yeah. Dodgers fan. Oh, he is. Okay, well yeah. then, you know, uh, James, I'm a Padres fan, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go down that road. Cardinals yeah. fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's okay. So he, you know, he doesn't like neither one of our teams. Right, right. <laughs> That's okay. We, you know, maybe we can, uh, I'll bet he'd be open for a part two down the road. Part two, the baseball episode. He's, he's, he's looking good, yes. sounding good. Uh, we are definitely uh, pulling for Yeah, him. and thank you, uh, Elizabeth, uh, for sending the stars, 500 yes. stars. Thank really you, appreciate that. If you guys have it in you man send us some stars man it helps us um keep the ball rolling a little bit and you know there's little stars it does it helps buy the equipment that we need to replace and and just the time it takes for certain things like janet it took her one one full day just to edit a a video that we 
had uh, yes. our audio messed up yeah. and, and just, you know, the time that we put in and, and all of our research. And Plus the new cars and, and the boat. Right. Yeah. It's true. Boat, yeah. Boats don't drive no, by exactly. themselves. They don't. We got to have the truck to pull the boat. So yeah. keep those stars coming. It's definitely you? a labor of love. And everything takes gas. Yeah, it, do, <laughs> it does. It sure does. Uh-huh. Yeah, it yeah. does for sure. <laughs> but hey, we really do appreciate you guys watching. So let's go through our spiel. By the way, hi, Teresa Gaddy. We're missing you tonight. She yeah, had to work this yeah. evening. So there is no TCAM yeah. this evening, but we will get her back. So let's, let's hit the recap here. Make sure, like I said at the top of the show, we need everybody out there to subscribe to the Tulsa Music Stream YouTube channel. Hit the little notification bell. Our short-term goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers. It's yeah. kind of a game changer. We're, we're close to 400 right now, so get on there. Let's get keep subscribed. that going. So you can, share it. Share you can it. see it live. You can see it on replay on that YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And then very shortly after we go live, we we pull the audio and upload it as an audio-only uh, podcast on these Fine platform Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and more. So check us out on there. I would be remiss if I did not say we are thinking about and praying for David Dover. Uh-huh. I did read a promising update. It sounds like he has. Uh, there, there are some positive signs of improvement. So oh, we're great. we're praying that that continues. So thoughts and prayers to David Dover and his family. Also, want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Dustin Little, Oki PC for being a great sponsor on our show here. If you guys have any IT needs whatsoever, hit up OKPC for those needs, 918-640-0892, or email Dustin at OKPC.com. DEB Concerts, thank you for your never-ending support of Tulsa Music Stream. Check out the DNB Processing Stage at the Roadhouse at Rocklahoma. Doug Burgess and crew will be rocking out with many fine bands in there at this year's Rocklahoma on Labor Day weekend. Identity Merch, we need everybody to go to the Tulsa Music Stream Facebook page. If you look in the top left part of that page, you will find our, it's it's listed as our website, but it's actually our online store and Identity Merch wants to print you a Tulsa Music Stream shirt. So you can get on there and order a shirt, a hoodie, a tank. We've got long sleeve shirts as well. GregShipman.com back on board with us. You're gonna be seeing some new rocket science pictures from shipment photography very soon if you guys have any photography needs whether it be a band or business shots uh, headshots any anything you need photography wise that is your group shipmentphotos.com psychoma filmworks thanks again for the awesome intro for this show and we need to talk about one more thing if i can find it here it is right here this is what we have coming up this friday winger is coming quick turnaround friday kind of an odd time but if you can't watch it live you can catch the replay it'll be at 3 30 p p.m central kip winger of winger this friday april 28th and then the next episode after that is i think that that one will be episode 80 Friday, wow, May nineteenth at eight PM Central. Ronnie Yonkins of Kicks. They're not letting me wear my Beavis and Butthead Winger shirt. No, so no. You we can are just not. have to imagine that on me. I, I told Nine. I said it looks like we've got about thirty minutes with Kip, but if you wear that shirt, it's probably going to be thirty seconds with. Kip. It's so true. So we don't want to so do that. I won't wear the shirt. Don't freaking do it. Dude. Or, the, or the Lara shirt. Yeah, don't do that either. Anyway, what else you guys got before we sign? I just off? want to say thank you to all the people that continually tune in to us yeah. uh, every episode Definitely. and are always there sending the stars and you know you know who you are all the people that yes. are always yep. here thank Steve, you guys Steve so much Eubanks is in the house hey Jim, Steve Jim Millette. hello Steve hey Jim Elizabeth Talcott what's up Travis Arnold Derek Thrasher's in here Michael Chabola down in Texas Travis Arnold all you guys that Coot tune Dixon. in faithfully <laughs> we appreciate you we cannot do this without you absolutely no thank way. you guys so much and share the replays for us guys we're just yeah, trying to grow yeah. it yeah we're, we're you know it's uh, just uh, just putting Tulsa on the rock and roll map, you know, one stream at a time. That's you true. Know? He's not lying. Yeah. Guys, we will see you back here Friday, this Friday, April 28th at 3.30 p.m. Central. Kip Winger of Winger will be on with us. Have a great week. Rock see solid you. interviews, baby. One show at a time. See you next time. Good night. Good night.